Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In the previous video, you went through the technique of cleaning up an image using the inverted perspective grid. This created a stabilized texture to clean up an image. However, the workflow we used was a combination of multiple action nodes to perform the task. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform the same thing, but only using a single action node. If you would like to follow along, you can use the shot from the previous video or click the link in the YouTube description to download the media. If you are watching the podcast version of this video, then type the link displayed in your internet browser. So starting in batch, we have the same tracking shot of the car and we want to remove the reflection. Be it crew or a distraction, we want to eliminate the reflection on this side of the car. Most of the steps in this workflow are the same as the previous video, so I am going to skim through them. If you want all the steps in greater detail, just watch the previous video. And as before, this technique can also be used on a variety of cleanup jobs and not just reflections. So let's get started. Drag out an action node from the batch node bin. Create a new media input with Control N and connect the front input. Double click on the action node for its controls and press ALT 2 for a dual screen split. Set the right view as the result view and the left view as the action schematic. So to remove the perspective and stabilize the movement, go to the action node bin and drag out a perspective grid node. Connect the perspective grid to the axis of the surface. Double click on the perspective grid node for its controls. Hover over the result view and press F8 to bring up the object view for the perspective grid. Start moving the corners of the perspective to align with the side of the car. Use the lines in the grid to match the perspective. So the grid should line up with both tyres to ensure the perspective is matched. Now ensure you switch to the tracking menu. Enable lighting in the tracking algorithm to deal with the lighting shifts in the reflection. Click Analyze. Scrubbing the time bar, the perspective should now be locked to the car. Hover over the object view and press F4 for the result view. So the perspective is doubled on the original shot. To create the stabilized texture, you do the following. Switch to the grid menu. Change the perspective transform mode from 3D to 2D. Enable the invert button. Looking at the result view and scrubbing the time bar, the perspective has been removed from the side of the car. At this point, you could increase the overscan output and connect this into other nodes to use tools such as painting. However, if you know that you can do all the cleanup work or compositing in action, it makes sense just to stay in the same action node. Let's see how this works. So the current perspective grid is driving the stabilization. Anything attached to it will have its transformations applied to the perspective grid. However, other nodes higher in the branch can apply transformations to the existing perspective grid, including the ability to invert it. So if you are working solely in action, there is no reason why you could not duplicate and invert the perspective grid in the action schematic and have all the transformations concatenate together in one node branch. To make this visually clear, select the perspective grid node and press Control D to duplicate it. Now move the perspective grid node to the top of the branch and connect it to the original node. In the current state, the perspective has been stabilized twice. To fix this, call up the controls for the top perspective grid. In the grid menu, disable invert. So the original perspective grid stabilizes the image and the second one reintroduces the same moves all in one action. Anything attached to the original perspective grid node will be working on the stabilized image and the second perspective grid will apply the original camera move to the newly introduced elements. We'll use the same technique with 3D shapes to remove the reflection and return any detail to the car. Zoom in to the result view to focus on the car door. Now the perspective grid might get in your way, so just select each node and press H to hide them. Ensure the stabilizing perspective grid node is selected. Switch to the action node bin and ensure your media entry is selected in the media list. 
drag a 3D shape node into the action schematic. It should automatically connect itself to the perspective grid. Hover over the result view and press F8 for the GMOSK object view. At no point will you see the stabilized texture like in the previous video. The reference image is coming from the selected media entry in the media list. Now draw the mask around the dark reflection and the GMOSK shape will be drawn into the correct perspective. Once you've completed the shape, switch to the Add mode with A. Press SHIFT and add a softness to the GMOSK. Switch back to Move mode. Next we'll use planar tracking to track the reflection. Double click on the GMOSK and control select all the vertices. Switch to the GMOSK tracking menu. Performing a planar track will change the GMOSK shape over time. Enable lighting as a consideration during the track. Press Analyze. So the GMOSK will change shape to match the reflection. Press F4 to go back to the result view. Double click on the 3D shape node to reveal the basics menu. Change the shape boundary to spline and gradient. Set the GMOSK transparency to for 3D shape only. Finally, enable media projection. You'll now offset the projection to remove the reflection. Double click on the axis of the projection. Scale and reposition the projection to more or less match the card door. You can spend as much time as you like getting it right. If you scrub the time bar and your image flickers, just go to the node preferences and disable the Z buffer. As in the previous video, we have lost the line defining a door and a vent. Let's add some more 3D shapes to bring back the details. Select the perspective grid node in the action schematic. In the action node bin, drag out another 3D shape into the schematic. Remember to switch to the GMOSK object view. Now draw a line that matches the line of the door. Click Finish to keep the spline open. Switch to Add mode and hold SHIFT to create a gradient softness around the spline. Switch back to Move mode and Control select all the vertices. Double click on the GMOSK node. In the GMOSK tracking menu, press Analyze. As before, the planar tracker will adjust the GMOSK shape over time. Press F4 to switch to the result view. Next, double click on the 3D shape node. Set the GMOSK transparency to for 3D shape only and enable media projection. To tweak it correctly, switch to the GMOSK gradient menu. Adjust the offset until the thickness of the spline matches the original line. You can also tweak the vertices of the spline to get the exact detailing on the car. Now go ahead and mask out the vent and track it using the same techniques you've seen in this video and the previous one. When we scrub the time bar, the dark reflection is gone, but the detailing in the car is still there. You can go ahead and render this out. So this workflow is actually quicker than the previous video, provided that you do everything in action. And hopefully, from what you have seen, action is very flexible for this type of work. The inverted perspective grid is great for fixing as well as compositing and I hope you enjoy using it. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.